Hey guys, it's Medicosis Perfectionatus, where medicine makes perfect sense. We continue our hypersensitivity reactions discussion. In the last video, we had an introduction about the four types and why we classify them this way, type 1, type 2, type 3, and type 4. Today, we will dig deeper into the first type of hypersensitivity, the story of the asthma, the atopy, the anaphylaxis, and the bee sting. With that said, now let's get started. Hypersensitivity, type 1, type 2, type 3, type 4, type 1, immediate, but type 4 is delayed. Okay, how about type 2? Cytotoxic, look at this, type 2 is cytotoxic, and type 3, you have free antibodies. What do you mean by free? I mean the antibodies are floating in the plasma, they are floating in your blood. They are not bound to cells. They are not cyto like type 1. Also, you can describe type 3 by three words. Serum immune complexes. Hypersensitivity. Which one is the fastest? Type 1. Which one is the slowest? Type 4. Can you describe type 1 in few words? Sure. Immediate. Anaphylactic. IgE. Mast cells. They rupture. Pew. They degranulate. Pew. Releasing histamine. And histamine can give you the symptoms of an anaphylactic shock. How about type 2? Psi 2 toxic. What do you mean? I mean, I have antibodies. Okay. These antibodies are bound to antigens. Okay. And this happens on the surface of the cell. The cell is the Psi 2. That's why type 2 is Psi 2 toxic. Okay. How about type 3? Three is free. You have antigens and antibody complexes. Same as two? Yeah, but with one difference. The big difference is this happens in the blood. And after this, since they are hanging around in the blood, the antigen antibody complex can end up being deposited in the blood, causing vasculitis, in your joints, causing arthritis, in your kidney, causing nephritis, etc, etc, etc. In type 1, type 2, type 3, we talked about antibodies like IgE, like the antibody that is cytotoxic, like the antibody that's freely floating in the blood. But type 4 has nothing to do with antibodies. Type 4 has nothing to do with the hemoral immune system. Type 4 is about T lymphocytes, cell-mediated immunity. No antibodies? Heck no. The T lymphocytes are super sophisticated. They communicate with each other via cytokines, which include the interleukins, which is the internet of the leukocytes. This is also the story of making a granuloma, and this takes time. Here is a quick overview of the four types of hypersensitivity. Type 1, immediate, okay, within minutes, all right? Hemoral immunity, which means I'll see antibodies, yes such as IgE, immediate, hemoral, preformed antibodies. Remember, IgE is ew. What do you mean by ew? Allergy, anaphylaxis, atopy, asthma, eosinophil, ew, bee sting, ew. How about type 2? Type 2 is cytotoxic. Okay. We have an antigen antibody complex. We're on the surface of the cell. And these antibodies could inhibit the target most of the time, or they could stimulate the target in one case only. That's why some crazy textbooks define this specific type as type 5 hypersensitivity. But this is a very bizarre classification that only lasted for 5 minutes, and then they went back to classifying hypersensitivity as four types. Can they inhibit the target? Sure, they can cause inflammation and cell dysfunction. Inflammation is seen in anti-glomerular basement membrane antibody disease, also known as good pasture syndrome, rheumatic fever, hyperacute transplant rejection. This is how your body rejects organs. Or they can cause cell dysfunction such as myasthenia gravis and pemphigus vulgaris. My muscles are in trouble, my skin is toast. They stimulate the target organ only in one case, which is the case of grave disease. I have antibodies against the receptor. Okay, what kind of receptor? This is the receptor waiting for the TSH. So it's called the TSH receptor. Okay. But these antibodies will come and stimulate the target. Have you ever heard of antibodies that stimulate the target? No. Antibodies are weapons of destruction. Now, this is an exception. These are antibodies that stimulate the target. Leading to what? Well, it's as if TSH is binding to its receptor. Oh, so a similar effect? Yeah. What does TSH do? 
it tells the thyroid gland to secrete tons of thyroid hormone. So Graves' disease, in a sense, is a type 2 hypersensitivity reaction. Okay, how about type 3? Type 3 is also antigen-antibody complex in a different location, floating freely in the plasma. Okay, this is the cause of serum sickness, which is a diffuse and acute reaction, or the Arthas reaction. It's not diffuse, it's very localized in one spot on your skin. And it's not that acute. Arthas is subacute. Serum sickness is generalized, Arthas is localized. Serum sickness is acute, Arthas is subacute and subcutaneous. Love it. Subacute, subcutaneous. Type 3 is also the tragic story of the nasty immune mediated vasculitis when this antigen antibody get deposited into the wall of the vessel this is vasculitis they can also get stuck into your kidney immune complex mediated nephritis or into your joints immune complex arthritis this is what happens in lupus this is what happens in rheumatoid arthritis and gazillion other diseases how about type 4? Type 4 is the most delayed. 3 days or about 72 hours or slightly less, slightly more. This is cell mediated. I'm not gonna send antibodies to destroy. No, I myself, I'm gonna go and kill that bacteria face to face. I'm gonna have a strong word with this tuberculosis face to face, cell to cell, cell mediated or cellular immunity. If I can kill the stupid invader, I will destroy it. How will you destroy it? Well, we are T lymphocytes. We have T cytotoxic cells. We kill. Okay. But if I can't kill it, well, at least I can surround it in a granuloma. This granuloma can have caseous necrosis, such as the caseating granuloma of tuberculosis, histoplasmosis, blastomycosis, coccidioidomycosis. Or it could be non-caseating, basically, any other granuloma is going to be non-caseating. A famous example is sarcoidosis. How to make a granuloma is a story that we'll talk about soon, but basically CD4 T lymphocytes will secrete interferon gamma, which will stimulate the macrophages to make the granuloma. We're done with the overview, now let's get into specifics. Here's type 1 hypersensitivity reaction. With the first exposure, an antigen enters into my body. Could be dust, pollen, etc. Now it's in my body. Who's gonna present it? The antigen presenting cell is gonna take that antigen, process it, and present it. To whom? To your lymphocytes. So that the lymphocytes can stop being so naive and grow the fringe toast up. When they grow up, they become helper cells. Helper cells. Okay, are you talking about the helper one? No, T helper 1 is for type 4 hypersensitivity. I'm talking about T helper 2. T helper 2, the one that helps the neighbor? Yeah, and who's your neighbor? The B lymphocyte. How would you help them? I will help them develop from a naive B lymphocyte into a grown up, mature B lymphocyte. From a lymphocyte that can only make IgM and IgD to a mature B lymphocyte that can give you all kinds of antibodies, IgM, IgA, IgG, IgE, IgD. I did this by the means of interleukin-4, especially to make IgE. So interleukin-4 comes from the Th2 to stimulate the B lymphocytes to become mature B lymphocyte, which secretes IgE. Okay. I also secrete interleukin-5, which stimulates eosinophils. But this will happen more with the second exposure. So tell me about the second exposure. Second exposure to the same stinking antigen. Okay, we call this re-exposure, which causes cross-linking of two IgE molecules on the surface of the mast cell. The mast cell is full of histamine, waiting to explode. This cross-linking of the two antibodies by the same antigen is the straw that broke the camel's back, causing mast cell degranulation. Pew! Releasing all kinds of mediators, such as histamine, serotonin, eosinophilic chemotactic factor. Since it's called chemotactic, it's going to attract, taxi from movement, the eosinophils by the means of chemicals. What does histamine do? Bronchoconstriction, vasodilation, increased capillary permeability, which causes exudate. And welcome to the land of acute inflammation. What does serotonin do? Bronchoconstriction, vasodilation, and increased capillary permeability. Welcome to the land of acute inflammation. Oh, by the way, these are preformed amines. The histamine was already made and ready and loaded inside the mast cell. We did not make it de novo. 
the histamine was already there inside the mast cell which was already there just ready to explode waiting for the trigger number three is the eosinophilic chemotactic factor which is going to recruit the eosinophils now the eosinophils came to play to do what to secrete histaminase why to clean up this mess to metabolize histamine into degradation products think of this as a kind of a negative feedback thing okay they also secrete aryl sulfatase which also metabolizes histamine and leukotrienes so far you know the story of the first exposure to the antigen and the early phase of the second exposure the story of the histamine serotonin and eosinophilic chemotactic factor but let me add another aspect the late phase of the second exposure to the same freaking antigen what's gonna happen here the release of prostaglandins, leukotrienes, and platelet-activating factors. So the early phase was histamine, serotonin, eosinophilic chemotactic factor. The late phase is prostaglandin, leukotrienes, and platelet-activating factors. What do prostaglandins do? Bronchoconstriction and increased mucus secretion. What do leukotrienes do? Bronchoconstriction, vasodilation. What do platelet activating factors do? Um, they activate the platelet. Oh, that makes sense. These mediators will prolong the inflammation initiated by the early phase. And this happens by recruiting neutrophils, eosinophils, and monocytes. Unlike the early phase, where these mediators were preformed and ready to explode, the late phase mediators are made on demand, de novo, from scratch new stuff these were already there before we saw the antigen for the second time they just happened to come out of the closet however these were not already there these are made on demand and that's why the late phase um, is late a classic example of type 1 hypersensitivity is the extrinsic allergic asthma and we have discussed this in detail in my pulmonology playlist these videos are on youtube the notes are on my website type 1 this is the example of asthma we have two types of asthma extrinsic which is allergic and intrinsic which is non-allergic this is of course the allergic one because hypersensitivity is a heightened allergy have you ever wondered why we can treat asthma with lipooxygenase inhibitors and leukotriene receptor antagonists yeah because leukotrienes are involved in the late phase of the second exposure to the same freaking antigen could be dust, could be pollen. Ever wonder why we give asthma patients mast cell stabilizers such as chromolinidocromenchitotifen? Oh, because they stabilize the mast cells, the releasers of histamine. Have you ever wondered why we have monoclonal antibodies against interleukin-5 for asthma patients? Yeah, because they destroy interleukin-5. No interleukin-5, no eosinophils. Can I give this drug to a patient with COPD? Um, COPD is not caused by eosinophils, so most probably not. Why do we give inhaled steroids for asthma patients because steroids inhibit the production of prostaglandins and leukotrienes. Watch my video on the arachidonic acid pathway. Ever wonder why we have monoclonal antibodies against IgE for asthma patients? Yeah. Why is aspirin bad for asthma patients? Because it increases leukotrienes. Why are beta blockers bad for asthma patients? Because they block the beta 2 receptor causing bronchoconstriction, more wheezing. <gasps> Inhaled corticosteroids include budesonide and fluticasone, the anti-leukotrienes. You have the LOX inhibitor xylutin, leukotriene receptor antagonist zephylocast, the mast cell stabilizer is chromolin, the monoclonal antibody against eosinophil is benralizumab, against IgE is omalizumab, and don't forget your beta-2 agonists, muscarinic antagonists. Asthma has two things, decreased diameter of the bronchi, hashtag bronchoconstriction, and increased bronchial secretion. And this is type 1 hypersensitivity reaction. So type 1, what do we have? We have asthma. If you like this video, you will adore my renal physiology course available at medicosisperfectionetics.com. Comes with 10 videos, 10 cases with notes, of course. I also have an endocrine pharmacology course. Learn everything you need to know about insulin, the different types of insulin, how to calculate the dose of insulin, and much more.
And for a limited time, get a 60% discount towards everything on my website just by using promo code New Year Learning at checkout. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell, and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to download my courses. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionatus, where medicine makes perfect sense.